This video will discuss Bond Ball Mill grindability testing and will address the following questions. What is it? What are the results used for? How the test is run? And why the test is run like it is? A grindability test is a locked cycle laboratory grinding test which evaluates the resistance of a material to ball milling. Test results allow us to calculate the bond ball mill work index using bonds formula. The bond ball mill work index is used in the mineral processing industry to compare the grindability of materials, estimate the energy needed for grinding, and use to size and select ball mill equipment. To understand how different materials compare in terms of grindability, Let's look at the grindability indices of four selected samples. The bond grindability indices of gypsum, fluorite, feldspar, and quartz are approximately 7, 10, 12, and 14 kilowatt hours per ton respectively. Note that the ball mill work index is directly correlated to the hardness of a material. As hardness increases, the material's resistance to grinding increases and grindability decreases. Therefore, a material with a lower grindability index is easier to grind than a material with a higher grindability index. For example, gypsum, a soft material, is much easier to grind than quartz, a harder material. In addition to comparing materials, the grindability index can be used to estimate the power and energy needed for grinding. The power needed to grind from one size to another can be estimated using the ball mill work index, the capacity, feed size, product size, and efficiency factor. For example, let's look at how we could estimate the power required to grind a gold bearing ore sample. For this example, the gold bearing ore sample has a bond ball mill work index of 16 kilowatt hours per metric ton. Our grinding circuit that we want to build will process 100 metric tons per hour, grinding the 850 micrometer feed to a 75 micrometer feed size. The material will be ground wet in an open circuit. The efficiency factor for an open circuit wet grind is 1.2. The efficiency factor is a correction factor for the bond ball mill work index. Plugging in our values, we see that the approximate amount of power needed to grind 100 metric tons of ore per hour from a 850 micrometer feed size to a 75 micrometer feed size is about 1,190 kilowatts. Finally, the ball mill grindability index, in conjunction with other information such as power requirements, as discussed in the last slide, mill capacity, and the loading charge of the mill can be used to size and select a ball mill. Unfortunately, this presentation will not cover this area in detail. Please consult literature for a more detailed approach to sizing and selecting a ball mill. Now that we understand what the grindability test results are used for, let's look at how the test is run. The grindability test can be broken down into four parts, sample preparation, locked cycle grinding, the product screen, and calculating the bond ball mill work index. First, a 10 kilogram sample is split from the sample being tested. The 10 kilogram split is crushed to a just passing 3.5 millimeter feed size and rotary split to obtain 12 samples that weigh approximately 800 grams each. Why is the feed crushed to a 3.5 millimeter feed size? It is crushed to 3.5 millimeters because 3.5 millimeters is about the coarsest material that you can grind using the conditions specified by bond. One of the samples is then dry screened to determine the head screen size distribution and what percent of the feed in terms of weight is finer than the desired grind size. Typically, a 150 micrometer grind size is evaluated during a grindability test. However, the grind size to be evaluated should be close to the product size required in commercial grinding. Therefore, the test should be run at the size expected in commercial grinding. Next, the initial ore charge is generated. 
A 1 liter graduated cylinder is filled with feed until it fills the cylinder up to the 700 cc mark. The feed is then weighed. This will be the initial ore charge. We use 700 cc of the material because it is better to use a set volume than using a set weight when comparing different materials. Maxson explained that in parallel grinding of two ores with different densities, the volumes of the ore are more similar than the mass of ore contained in industrial mills. Furthermore, the Bond Ball Mill with a 700 cc charge only occupies about 35% of the voids. This volume is practical for testing as grinding occurs quickly. Note that this test is not run at conditions that ensure maximum efficiency because that is not the objective of the test. For our test, the sample arrived at the laboratory as three different sample types, some crushed rock, some coarse rocks, and one very large rock. The large rock sample was crushed by hand until it was small enough to load into a laboratory crusher. The samples were crushed by stage crushing to an 100% 3.5 millimeter feed size. The crushed feed was then split by coning and quartering to obtain 10 kilograms for a grindability test. The 10 kilogram split was loaded into a rotary splitter and split to obtain 12 equal samples, which weighed approximately 800 grams each. One of the samples was then screened to determine the head screen size distribution. This distribution is used to calculate the undersize contained in the feed prior to grinding. The videos in this presentation have been sped up due to time as the time required for the completion of a test is quite substantial. A 1 liter graduated cylinder was then filled to the 700 cc mark. The sample was compacted to ensure that proper sample volume is achieved. This sample will be used as our initial ore charge. The ball mill was then loaded with the appropriate ball charge and initial ore charge. The lid was then secured. The ball mill grindability test is conducted as a lock cycle test because it mimics a continuous grinding ball mill with a classifier. Industrial circuits typically use a hydraulic classifier. This is not practical in a laboratory setting and using a dry screen during the grindability test makes the test easier and quicker to run. Once the initial sample has been prepared, the ore charge is added to the bond ball mill. The initial number of mill revolutions is not calculated but selected and ranges from between 150 to 250 revolutions. While crushing the sample, you can usually get a feeling for how hard the material is. If a sample is known to be hard, it is better to select a higher number of initial revolutions, as a harder material re require more mill revolutions than a softer material to obtain the target weight for the undersize and it may also decrease the amount of cycles required for the test to reach a continuous state. 
The sample is then ground in the ball mill for the selected number of revolutions. Some important things to note about the mill is that it rotates at a critical speed of 0.91 because the mill has smooth liners. Rotating the mill at this speed leads to a grinding profile similar to that obtained in an industrial mill. It is believed that the mill uses smooth liners because it is easier to remove the material from the ball mill after each cycle. The sample is then removed from the bond ball mill and screened. The amount of undersize generated is calculated by determining the weight of the undersize in the post-ground sample and subtracting the weight of the undersize in the pre-ground sample. The undersize from screening is then stored and the remaining product size fractions are recombined. A, si of the, a split of the original feed is taken using a rotary splitter to obtain new feed equivalent to the weight of undersized material removed from the test. This split is combined with the recombined product and will be used as feed for the next cycle of the test. The amount of undersize generated per mill revolution is calculated by dividing the undersize generated during the latest cycle and dividing it by the amount of revolutions. The amount of revolutions for the next cycle is calculated by taking the target undersize weight and dividing it by the undersize generated per revolution of the latest cycle. The target undersize weight is the amount of undersize needed to mimic the target circulating load. Typically, a 250% circulating load is used during the grindability test. Why 250%? It is believed that when the test was developed, a 250% circulating load was the most common circulating load in the industry. If a different circulating load is to be used during commercial grinding, the test should be conducted using the circulating load expected during commercial grinding. The test is run for a minimum of five cycles or until equilibrium is reached. Now let's watch a cycle of the grindability test. You'll note that the counter was kind of knocked uh, off during testing, however the revolutions were accounted for. <clears throat> Since the material was really hard, uh, we selected the maximum number of initial revolutions, 250. So you can see as the mill goes around, the counter each time goes up by one. Now we're at 250 revolutions, we're ready to empty the ball mill. Let me kind of fast forward through this portion. It takes quite a while. So take off the top. Alright, now I got the lid removed. We're going to remove the fines from the outside of the lid using a paintbrush. There's the uh, freshly ground feet in there. that when you actually dump the balls out of the mill, it's very loud, so you should be wearing ear protection. Alright, so now we empty the mill. And we're just going to very carefully clean each ball and place it into a bucket. And also clean out the mill real well with the paintbrush. And we uh, go ahead and, and 
the screen the product that came out of the mill. Uh, let's see how much undersize we've generated. Right there, that's a 150 mesh screen or 150 micron screen. We can use that weight to calculate the number of revolutions for the next cycle. Here's what the fines look like after we screen them out. Carefully put them into that pan. It's a paintbrush. Get, carefully get all the fines into that pan. And we weigh that. We do the same thing with the oversized material. So then we're ready to do the next cycle. The amount of undersize removed is uh, replaced with new feed. And the oversize from the last cycle is added back to the mill. The mill is then tightened up, and we're ready to start the next cycle using the amount of revolutions that we calculated from the last cycle. Finally, after we're done with the tests, we, uh, we can do a wet screen on the undersize of the last three cycles. Uh, the test has to be run for a minimum of five times uh, before the test can be ended. Uh, sometimes the test can take longer than five cycles. Uh, it really depends on the material. But once we get the product screen distribution from the tail screen, And plug all the information that we've gotten from the test and determine our bond work index.